less important in any organization and more important in an airport where even a small mistake like leaving a foreign object debris or FOD can endanger the life of hundreds of people. At the Rajiv Gandhi International Airport at Hyderabad, we have taken a lot of steps to make it a very safe and secure airport. As the CEO of GHIAL emphasizes, safety is not the responsibility of a safety officer alone, but of the entire airport community. We have a very well-defined safety organization. Traditionally, one has always believed that uh, a safety organization comprises of a safety officer and therefore it is his responsibility to ensure that there is a safety compliance. I think we have gone uh, beyond that very traditional approach and we have, we have a very well-documented, multi-tiered safety organization comprising of very simple core committees which are operating at the ground level, uh, say for example an apron safety committee or uh, uh, a landside safety committee which are then integrated into high-level review committees all folding up into apex safety committees which is personally headed by me. We have in place a site safety policy that encompasses all areas of the airport premises and we expect all our employees to adhere to them 24 by 7. All agencies working at the airport shall take responsibility for the safety and personal well-being of their employees. Everyone is advised to report unsafe practices to the safety in charge. Unauthorized entry into airside is strictly prohibited and all entry and exit in and out of the air site will be only through security gates. Personal protective equipment, PPE, adherence to PPE. When you take up any kind of uh, job, what kind of equipment you should wear to ensure that uh, you are safe and you don't cause anything to people around you. So that kind of a briefing we keep continuously giving to them. All personnel operating in air side, including visitors, shall wear high visibility jackets and other personal protective equipment appropriate to their work area. You will find all our people wearing the safety jackets and they will also wear the safety gloves. They will have the safety cones put into various where the uh, vehicles have to be parked. And then the, we have a very strict control and monitoring of this operation of the equipments of various ground power units and AC units. The operators are trained all vehicles shall display valid airside vehicle permit. Vehicle drivers must possess valid airside driving permit. Vehicles shall give way to aircraft while operating in movement area. Vehicles shall strictly adhere to the speed limit of 30 km per hour on service roads and 10 km per hour in the aircraft stands. Vehicles shall display obstacle lights during poor visibility and night time. Vehicle exhaust shall not be positioned over fuel pits. Vehicle operators shall be aware of height limitation areas and shall strictly adhere to all apron regulations. Only authorized vehicles shall enter runways or taxiways after clearance from the ATC. Alcohol consumption is strictly prohibited and airside personnel shall conduct random alcohol check to enforce the prohibition. Pedestrians shall cross service roads only at pedestrian crossing points. Handling of dangerous cargo shall be undertaken only as per guidelines of the DGCA. Safety is a part and parcel of our business, uh, especially in cargo. We handle all kinds of goods uh, from uh, normal pharmaceutical materials to uh, dangerous goods to radioactive material to firearms to uh, uh, we have a defense industry here, so we carry missiles and all these kind of equipment. So we are very highly sensitized to the security aspect of it. We have a highly trained uh, set of uh, uh, personnel who are both dangerous goods and security and safety trained. So there are two aspects. First of all, personal safety in terms of handling of cargo. How do you lift a box? How do you turn with it? Do you pivot uh, You know where the pressure is on the spine or do you turn with your feet? So all these things are trained and, and taught to the uh, personnel as they come on board. Fuel or oil spill shall be reported to airport operations immediately. Entry into the terminal shall only be with valid AEP or ticket copy or visitor's entry ticket. Visitors shall be escorted by a person having valid permanent AEP and his or her movement shall be restricted to the defined areas of AEP. 
emergency fire exits and office doors, corridors, passenger movement areas shall be kept free from any obstructions at all times. There shall not be any high stacking of material, containers, stationery in the passenger movement areas or emergency exits. No hazardous object shall be kept exposed in the passenger area and the common areas of the terminal. Contact fire wardens in case of any emergency and first aid requirement. First aid kits have been made available in the airport at the following locations. Drivers shall adhere to road safety signs and instructions. Two-wheeler drivers shall wear helmets and car drivers and its co-passengers in the front seat should wear seat belt. Children will be accompanied by adults while using escalators. Fire safety is important in any organization, particularly in an airport. The airport has an airport rescue and firefighting service, manned by 112 trained personnel and equipped with state-of-the-art fire appliances and equipment. Four Rosenbauer crash fire tenders are part of its fleet, each armed with 12,500 litres of water, 1,500 litres of foam compound and 500 kg of dry chemical powder. The operational objective is to achieve a response time of 2 minutes, not exceeding 3 minutes, in any part of aircraft movement area, as per international civil aviation organisation norms. In case of a fire, switch off the electric supply to the affected area. If it is an electric fire, follow your fire warden's instructions. Evacuate the area via emergency exits. Be attentive to public address system for any announcement. And do not enter the building unless all clear signal is given by ARFF. Periodic emergency exercises are conducted to ensure effectiveness of airport emergency plan. Fire wardens are trained to handle building evacuation and employees are expected to follow their instructions. Airport employees are also given training in fire safety and building evacuation. The fuel lines area is another critical part of the airport premises where extreme care should be taken to ensure foolproof safety. There are two 2700 kL fire water tanks and if I, uh, you can see this red pipeline over here. These are all fire protection uh, systems. So we have a very elaborate system by which you can actually fight fire for four hours. Four, four hours of firefighting system we have, including water and foam, etc. And our people are also uh, well trained in usage of this. An 18-bed Apollo Center is located inside the passenger terminal building and patients, that includes all passengers and employees, in need of specialized and urgent medical care are attended to at this ultra-modern health center. Statistics has proven that behind every fatal accident, there are 3,000 near misses. And therefore, it is very important for us to drill down to a situation where near misses are totally avoided. And the only way one can do this is to have a very comprehensive, integrated safety system encompassing all the areas we operate in involving all our stakeholders. There are several mechanisms available to report safety hazards, such as online reporting system and drop boxes that are placed at various places in the passenger terminal building. Let us make the Rajiv Gandhi International Airport at Hyderabad the best in the world, especially with regard to health, safety and care for the environment.